Good evening world and welcome to the Master Christian Dog Show. This is Master Christian and we're going to talk about uh, new dogs at home today for you. Because people are right now, as the holidays coming, everybody's getting new dogs and things. We got a lot of extra things to talk about. Uh, we got some dogs doing some great things around the world. Uh, the Ebola dog, we'll, we'll touch on that. And we're, we're just going to talk to you about things that you need to do to make your life better with you and your dog at home. We'll be right back with the Master Christian Dog Show on the BeatDropsRadio.com, WBBE. And we're back with the Master Christian Dog Show on the BeatDropsRadio.com. The listening in live number is 401-347-0418. The call-in number, which uh, everybody needs to take down, write it down, put it in your phone, do what you got to do because... I know it's a lot of people out here with issues and you need to call in and get some answers to your questions. I know these dogs are driving some of you crazy. And it's not the dogs, it's you, but the dogs are what you think is going on. The call in number is 404-826-9223. Again, that's 404-826-9223. Okay, we got a question that just came in over the web. Uh, says my dog howls too much so tired of her keeping me up all night and they're so tired of her keeping them up all night so we, we got to get to the root of why your dog is howling what's going on with it is, is it a behavior that uh is being triggered by you or something outside is it howling at the moon we got to do some investigations but for what's going on with the dog howling if you go about it the same way to try to fix the problem every day, it's not going to work because it didn't work yesterday. It didn't work the day before that. So we need to start analyzing what's going on with the dog and why is the dog howling. Some dogs like to howl, but how you move the dog and the things that you do with the dog dictate the freedom that they have to do some things that get on your nerves. So if your dog is on free roam, and by free roam, I mean the dog is moving around the house to his own devices, it's never on leash in the house, it's never being uh, sequestered by you to do certain tasks, then the dog has time to do these things that get on your nerves. If you stimulated the dog and made it work for you a little bit by giving, putting some commands in there, helping it uh, understand that it's with you and you're not with it, then the dog may change that howling behavior or it may not be all night but if it's all night you gotta take steps there's gotta be some things that you know even if you gotta stay up a few nights to fix it it needs to be fixed because something is triggering the howling now I would need to talk to you a little more and, and ask you a few questions and get some details if you can call in the call in number is 404-826-9223 or you can email me at uh, masterchristian404 at gmail.com and we, we open a line of communications where we can try to problem solve your issue and get you some sleep at night because hey if your dog is howling all night and you're not getting any sleep that makes for a bad person during the day and everybody needs to be up and at their peak to go to work right Bianca? yeah you're absolutely correct I hope uh, you were able to answer everything that he had I, I hope so because I, I hear a lot of dogs barking at night and everything, but I, I do dogs every day. I've been around dogs most of my life, so I hear it. They wake me up a couple times, and I go back to sleep because it's a dog barking. Now, my dogs, I make sure that at nighttime they're comfortable. They got work during the day. They stayed on a good schedule. They were happy when they went down. If, if they're barking, they're barking for a reason. They just don't sit around and do the sing it, song and dance and bark all night. We can't. That's, that's unacceptable behavior, and that, that's part of... You know the big thing about having a dog. When you have a dog in your home, it needs to have to abide by some rules. Let's let's get it straight. There needs to be some rules and regulations. There's rules and regulations for us. There's we we make rules and regulations for the children, and there needs to be some rules and regulations for the dogs. And without rules and regulations, your dog is in a state of panic. It doesn't understand what's going on, and you can't control the situation. And when you can't control the situation, what that brings up in a human being, that brings frustration and panic up in you. Because now it's something that you feel like you're responsible for that belongs to you, and you're not getting what you want out of it. Don't get frustrated. The moment you get frustrated, the dog has won. The moment 
that you're not able to stand up and be confident about the decisions you make with your animal, the dog is one. And they're trying to win. Why wouldn't they be trying to win? They're, they're, they're individual animals. If dogs were left to their own devices in the wild, they would rule the world. Yeah. They would. They, because their, their pack order and their structure, they're, they're awesome. They don't overcomplicate things. You know, when we have the, our first mind, we call it, and right. we think up a good solution, and then we overthink the problem. Yeah, we can overanalyze. We can overanalyze quite a bit. All the time. And in, in being too analytical, things go bad because now you're wasting time when you could have tried to solve the problem, and even if you failed, you solved something. You know that that solution set that you came up with is not the solution set for this problem. But if you don't be efficient and quick about trying to solve the problems, then they fester, they move on and move on. Dogs don't, uh, they don't stay in the moment. They, they're moment to moment. The next moment is a new moment. The next day is a new day. We sometimes carry things around with us for quite some time. We, we, we wanna, you know, it's, it's things that happen in your childhood. Your mother liked your sister too much. Your uh, grandma liked your cousin more than she liked you. Somebody didn't take you to the mall when you wanted to go. And we're walking around angry at somebody in our adult lives over things that happened when we were children. You'd never catch a dog being angry about things like that. <laughs> right. it, it's not, it doesn't work like that. No. But the one thing that does work, if you're violent with the dog, it will remember. And you being violent with the dog sets a pattern of events. It sets a behavior that so, sometime in the future, this dog may try to defend itself from you. And that's when people say, hey, the dog turned on me. I had to put it down or it tried to attack me or something. No, the dog was in a fight long ago. It just didn't have the tools to fight you back. So when it got older, you were doing something and the dog said, hey, are you trying to fight me again? Or I know you'll fight me. Also, the behavior that, that, that dominant violent behavior that we use to control things makes is fear. So, you know, I get a lot of people that want security dogs mm. and they want their dog to be strong. Yeah. They want their dog to defend them no matter what goes on. Some people even want to sick the dog on people and I tell them that's, I don't know about that. that's very improper. Yeah, that is. That, it is because people are already terrified of the dog. Then you want to sick it on somebody. You want to you want to make them more afraid. A dog is a deterrent. Only in the case of bodily harm, death, the injury, and all that, do you let your dog perform in a protection mode. You you don't want your dog just running up biting people. But some people want this, and they beat the dog because they want control on something else, and then they want this protection out of the dog. If you beat the dog and make the dog afraid of you, why would it stand in front of you? and be confident that it's defending you, it's going to look back. And in that second where it's looking back to see what you're doing and that you're, you're happy with what it's doing, that you're not about to beat it, they got you. Mm. Because they knew your dog wasn't sure. Mm. And anybody that's been around dogs can read that. Mm. So confidence. Confidence does not mean dominance. Dominate with consistency. I say that all the time. The way to dominate with consistency when you have a new dog in your home is from the time that dog comes in the door until the time that dog earns. Let me let me say that large for you. Earns. Like you go to work and you earn your money to pay your bills. Your dog must earn the right to be off leash in your house. It's a common mistake everybody makes. And it's an easy fix for the mistake. Put the dog on leash in the house until you're getting what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I, I just watched a friend the other day. They went and got a beautiful dog. The dog is excellent. But as soon as the dog got to the house, the dog was placed on the floor and the dog ran around. The dog peed over here and pooped over here a little bit. And this was the first time the dog came into the home. And, you know, that's how it happens with everybody. But it's not up to me to criticize or get angry and make somebody feel like they're doing it wrong because they're not. You're just doing it how everybody's been doing it. We let the dog free when we bring it into the house. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's a better way to do it. And it's not my way, it's just a better way. My way used to be take the dog home and cut it loose too. And I had gates. I was just at a customer's home the other day. Uh, as I say customer, dog training customer, Master Christian Dog Training. I'm the uh, CEO of the company and 
Uh, I do train a few dogs here and there. So I'm at a, a you know, sometimes, every day, I train a dog. <laughs> I got to, because in order for me to transfer this to the person, I have to put it in the dog first so the dog will be able to understand, even if the person makes a mistake, the dog still understands. Then I teach the person how to be calm, because calm energy is what it is. But back to what I was talking about. I was at a customer's house the other day, and they have a, a large dog, maybe a 130 pounds already. He's about nine months old. He's a beautiful dog. But at the house, it's a lot of, I, I should say, gates and things blocking rooms off. It's a lot of uh, house that's not being used. And when you want to get up and walk through your house, your home, the place where you lay your head, you don't want to be hindered or confined by blocking off rooms without doors and things because your dog is out of control and it goes in these rooms and it does these things and it's only one way to stop this blocking off the stuff is not stopping it because as soon as you try to go through and you move that gate the dog bursts through hmm. it goes where it wants to go or it's a challenge it's trying to jump over this thing so it's, it's an easy fix to all of these problems people are having with their dogs mm -hmm. put the dog on leash in the house I, I can't stress that enough because that is your number one way to stop many of the behaviors that's going on that's that's almost like the secret to the uh to the baked beans but the dog's not telling you, you understand yeah <laughs> so we'll be back with the master christian dog show on the BeatDropsRadio.com, WBVE. Yeah, it's your boy, Master Christian on these wheels right here. Got my nephew in the studio. He hasn't decided or not. He's an animal person, too. He likes all different kinds. His twin sister, Ayana, his name is Elijah. She was here last week to entertain you and talk about animals. He, he's over there deciding whether he wants to talk. So we're going to leave him out of this segment right here and see if he's going to be ready for the last one. You can uh, check me out on Facebook at Master Christian, Instagram Master Christian 404, Twitter MCDT 404, the email is Master Christian 404 at gmail.com, the website is masterchristian.com, the dog training is Master Christian Dog Training, the listening line is 401 347 0418, and yo, I'm still talking about call in. We need these phones ringing over here. We need to be able to help you tonight. Can't wait till tomorrow to get this help for you and your dog. Tonight, 404-826-9223. Now, I just want to touch on the Ebola dogs, because we got a couple Ebola dogs we have been talking about for the past couple weeks, maybe a few weeks or something. And I, I tell you what, we got an angry owner in Madrid. She's furious. She had Ebola. They killed her dog. The panic, they killed the dog. They euthanized her dog, now she's healed, and no dog. Her and her husband are extremely mad because they said the dog was like their son that they never had, and it was unfair for the authorities to come get their dog, euthanize their dog without their consent. It's, they, they're just angry, and I, I understand the anger, but you, I, I, I understand the fear of Ebola, too. You know, it's, it's rough when we contract things that we can't cure at the time that we we don't have the proper medical and the proper information on and what would you have done Bianca would you would you have uh, killed the dog yes wow uh, I don't think Peter would <laughs> like to hear any of us <laughs> I'm just saying you know you gotta, I, I can see both sides but I, you gotta take air on the uh, on the side of caution that's a serious disease. You don't know exactly how that thing is going to roll. And as you've said in the past, the dog can't talk to you. can't tell you if it's got certain things going oh, on. So, um, I, I'm sorry, but the dog would have to go. And well, it, it's better than killing the person. And then, dang, the dog made it. No. I'm well, you know, but in, in, uh, in the Nina Fram case, you know, they they took the King Charles, uh, what, what's his name, Bentley? They took the... Uh, the Bentley the Cavalier King, King Charles Cavalier, I believe, or, you know, and they, they took him, they quarantined him, they took good care of him, 
Bentley did not have Ebola. Uh, Nina and the dog have been reunited, I different believe. Country. Hold on, hold on. Different country. Yeah, this, this is the, the country. <laughs> so I guess if uh, you got a problem and you, you get Ebola or something, be in the United States, huh? If you want to keep your dog. <laughs> I guess so, because Spain was like, we, this ain't America. We killing your dog. Well, America hadn't had the chance to do uh, the quarantine and stuff. It hadn't happened yet. This The, the Madrid was a little... Uh, forward, but before that, and you know, they, they said we, we're not taking a chance of this being an outbreak. Uh, the animal's not going to pass it to any people. We're going to go ahead and put him out of his great life not misery, great life because the dog didn't even know that it was an Ebola scare. <laughs> well, the dog um, is just the wrong place, the wrong time, wrong owner. I think <laughs> no, man. geographically the dog picked the wrong latitude and longitude, I guess. <laughs> you should have told your mama that, no, nah, that's all bad. That's all bad. Hey, man. So, you know, that's the, how some things happen to happen. The dog in Texas doing well. Uh, the nurse in Texas doing well. I don't know if she's totally cured. But, um, I haven't heard the word cured yet. I've heard that, you know, Ebola free. I've heard, but I haven't heard the word cured. Have you? Uh, she's been declared free of the deadly disease. Free of the deadly disease. I don't it's, know if that it, means cured, though. Well, you know, if you go to jail and they let you free, then um, they put you on probation. Leave that alone, young man. They put you on probation. Sit up straight, please. And you're never really free. They're still watching you. You have this record that follows you around. You can say Ebola free for now. Does that mean remission? I mean... It doctors says free. Play, doctors so, play games with words. You know, when I see free, I, that means when I go in the store and they say it's free, that means I, I take it with me and I leave, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. So Ebola talking free. talking about doctors right now. Okay, but and sugar free. Situation. Sugar free. It's talking about food. It's, it's doctors, a political situation. Freedom. E Ebola. I'm trying to use free in a, word, in, in a way that we can. Panic. Bianca, you so not, hard on Ebola, though. Yes, I am. <laughs> I know, because a, a, a vaccine was created in uh, the early part of this century, and it sat on the shelf because the poor companies could not, I mean, poor countries could not pay for it. Okay, but still. And it was a, it worked 100% in all of the test monkeys, 100%. And the, and the monkeys, you, you, yeah. you, 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 you making and us hey, monkeys now? We monkeys? I didn't say we was monkeys, but they always test things out on animals, on monkeys, mice, all of that, before they do it in, in humans. And it was 100% of Now, was it monkeys or primates? No, it was monkeys. Okay. So, 100%. It, it wasn't next to us on the chain. It was if, a if couple If you go to the Facebook down. fan page for the station, I have that story listed there. Okay. New York Times, it I, sat there. I'm going to have to check it out check because... It out. And, I, and they I know they have a cure. For, for 2010, but they said it, it wouldn't be lucrative enough because the poor countries couldn't pay for it, so they didn't do anything until now they're trying to say, okay, maybe we need to go ahead and Well, because it's stuff. all about the money. Of course it's about the money. So if they didn't have the money, they could miss them with it. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Now, on a lighter note, not really, we have uh, three golden retrievers from Lutheran Church Charities Canine Comfort Dogs. They traveled to Chicago, no, they tra traveled from Chicago to Marysville, Washington on Monday. They went to uh, interact with the people and, and comfort the people after the shooting that they had over there Friday at the high school. Two of them actually traveled to Newton, Connecticut. That's a uh, one three-year-old golden retriever named Luther and one six-year-old named Shammy. Two of them traveled... Uh, to Connecticut after the Sandy Hooks elementary shooting also and they traveled to Boston to be comfort dogs after the Boston Marathon. The other dog is uh, Aaron which is nine months old that went with them to Washington and they, they took the dogs in to try to make people happy you know as they need comfort and dogs seem to have a tendency to calm people down if they're therapy dogs and everything uh, Bianca, you know, when you have a bad day, would you like me to bring some dogs over for you? No, I'm good. What if they were comfort dogs, Bianca? I'm good. You don't want any comfort from a dog? No. I'm what about comfort food? I, ha I have a husband. You, know. you have a husband? Yeah, I have a husband. It's not the same. 
Yeah, I don't want a comfort dog. Okay, comfort food? I can get a massage. Can they do massages? Uh, they can. Dog can do massages. They can lick your toes. I don't want no wet tongue no, on my. No toe dog. fetish. I'm good. Son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but okay. yeah, they're, they're using the dogs in some magnificent ways, other than just defending the country and everything. <laughs> the dogs are going out. They're they're helping people feel better about what's going on, feel better about their life. And in the meantime, in between time, we actually have a NFL player that was injured while potty training his puppy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I got this story right here. Uh, what's his name? It's Detroit Lions tight end Joseph Farla. He was teaching his three-month-old Pomeranian Husky mix to go to the potty. Potty training. Potty. And he somehow tripped over the dog and hurt himself. Hey, potty. Never mind. I want to... Okay. He sprained his ankle. Can't play football now. Who was he? he? He's tight end. Come on, man. He, he got, you know, you got to be using those skills now to if go. He wasn't using too many skills. <laughs> if the dog took you out. Not, uh, no, not, no. not the man running at you. Three year old Pomeranian Husky mix. Little tiny, little bitty thing. But I, I, I in up. defense, in defense <laughs> All right, I'm listening. of the man that the dog took out. Hitting like uh, he was coming out the backfield. No, he fell down trying not to hurt the dog too. If he missed out, you know, this is a big guy. He plays football. He didn't want to fall on his puppy and crush it. So you know, he just jacked himself. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, he jacked yeah, himself. He, jacked himself. He, he took himself out the game. He said, you know, but at, at, back to that defense thing. I don't do a whole lot of defense, and in my life, I only play offense because if we don't score any points. We can't win the game. When the defense gets the ball, it immediately turns into offense. So offense is all that there is to me. But in defense of what, what's going on here, I remember back with my first dog that I owned in my grown life. His name was DeVille. He was maybe four months old. Yes, okay. DeVille. DeVille. He was a miniature pincher. He got put down a little uh, earlier this year. He was 15 years old. He was, you know... Skinny, he was an old man. It was his quality of life had diminished. It was time for him to go, and I surely hated that he had to leave us because he was such the good guy. But you know, we all get called somewhere sometimes, and we got to be ready. But when he was uh, four months old, I took him to a party with me after I got off work. I work a twelve-hour shift. Stop at home. I grab my dog. No, he was six months. I give him six months, and. You know, this goes along with today's topic of uh, your new dog in your home. All right. And you, you have to be attentive and take care of this even when you take it out of the home. And you have to be responsible as an adult. So I, I, I like my show because I'm able to tell people when I wasn't responsible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, can maybe, you hear that? hey, can you hear that? I'm good. Yeah, with, probably, I, probably. I'm good with the dogs now. I can make 20 dogs seem like one dog. But back then, this mm -hmm. one little puppy I had. I tell you, I took him over to my cousin's house for the party. It was Friday. I get off work. I work hard at Chrysler and everything. And me and my dog had to go and uh, go to the party. So I get to the party and the adults were in the house doing their thing. The kids were on the porch. A couple of adults on the porch. It's dark outside. I work second shift. You know, yada, 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 all that stuff. But I, I, my, I got my dog with me. I'm carrying my dog around because I didn't know any better back then about carrying the dog. So I'm carrying my dog around. He is on leash, though. He is on leash. He's on leash. So my cousin's, uh, my cousin's man friend. Uh, he, he. That sounds nice. Yes, her her man friend. <laughs> I, I don't want to call him her boyfriend. He was a grown man. Man friend. Older than me, man friend. All right. Uh, father of her children. Yes. He he asked me. Uh, he said, "You going in the house? Hey, I'll, I'll hold the dog for you." And on this day. I learned one of the most valuable lessons of having an animal, having a dog, that I had ever learned in my life on this day. And I carried this with me and I passed this out to all of the people because I, I need you to do better. And the football player stumbling over the dog just, you know, he, he hurt himself and he's out of commission, but he didn't harm the dog and it was possible for him to harm the dog. 
So I, I left the dog on the porch with this man that was much, much older than me. And I figured that I can go in the house and the dog was going to be fine because I left him with an adult. <laughs> you like that word, adult? <laughs> when do we become adults? Do, is there a time? Do we know? I mean, legally they look at an age, but it's maturation. It's maturation. And maturation can come at any time, at any age. I mean, 21 doesn't necessarily mean that you're mature, that you're an adult. Okay, so... I left, um, I guess I, I left, uh, I say grown man. Grown man. Not a dog. We won't use a dog because a dog yes. has a kind of reference to responsibility. Yeah, it does. It does. Left my dog on the porch on leash and uh, within five minutes of me being in the house, I heard a blood curdling scream come from outside. It was my dog. Now, screaming like that? Blood curdling. Damn. I rushed. Full speed, I, I went into a sprint to the door to get to find out what was going on. Now this uh, uh, grown man, he decided to take my rather expensive little pup and give it to the kids in the darkness outside to play with it. Well, one thing led to another. Kids running around in the dark, never good. Kids goofy, it's late at night, they've been doing things all day, never good coordination off goofy 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 someone trips over the dog and breaks his elbow oh no yes not all no yes my dog was outside with a broken elbow the little clip that fits your elbow together so the bones meet was snapped off oh man and he was in excruciating pain well, I guess so excruciating so I had to make a decision that night whether um uh, I was going to allow him to stay in his pain and put him down. It was it was that serious that the pain was, it was disturbing everyone and everything that was going on. And I sat up all night long because it was a Friday. You just can't, we didn't, I'm in Ohio. We don't have the emergency vet at the time that I can just run him to. I, my vet doesn't open until 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. They won't be able to fix anything until Monday morning because they, they don't do surgeries on the weekend. But... Oh, I went on ahead and uh, I sat up all night. I couldn't get any sleep. Every time the dog screamed, everybody else screamed. Everybody was in, you know, I, I took him home and it, it was so painful to see this puppy in all of this pain. So I went and took him to the vet the next morning to make a long story short because it, it could get much longer and I could tell you how I felt and everything about it. I can tell you how I feel right now. I'm going to save that keep that to myself. I feel that responsible is what I am now because I don't do this anymore. But uh, I put the dog in the man's hand. Dog, The man allowed the dog to get hurt. And I had to ask myself a question. Whose fault is that? I used to think it was his fault. Whose fault is that, Bianca? I it was yours. You and always, fault. let me tell you, for everybody that owns a dog on the planet Earth, if something happens to your dog, if your dog does something that you don't like, it's your fault. You are the responsible human being. And you have to keep up with the dog. We're going to have to take a break. But let me tell you about the $3,500 I had to spend to get that dog's elbow fixed on Monday. Ouch. You think anybody offered to help me with that? We'll be right back with the Master Christian Dog Show on the BeatDropsRadio.com. WBBE. Ouch. $3,500. Time is running out <laughs> the master christian dog show is almost over call in with your questions 404-826-9223 or we'll be gone now i still answer your questions if you email me or get in touch with me through the website or whatever you do we got a lot to talk about in this last segment uh we have elijah here and elijah wanted to first and foremost this is my nephew He's uh, an animal kid. He wants his own show. He was mad because everybody else had been on the show and he hadn't been on the show. But he didn't really feel like talking about dogs. What's your dog's name, Elijah? Ebony. Ebony. What kind of dog is Ebony? She's a pit bull. She's a pit bull. You love Ebony the pit bull? Yes. Okay, who would you want to shout out to? Who would you want to say hi to? Go ahead and say hi. Hi, Mama. Okay, who's all, who are all these people? They're my family. Okay. Hey, I'm your family too. You didn't say hi to me. Hi, Uncle. 
Hi, Elijah. So we, we got a family full of people that are interested in life, living things. That, that's something. And while we're talking to Elijah, I got a little map here that tells the dogs from all around the world and where they belong and all that. And this is the trending dogs for different parts of the world. And I just want to tell you that the United States, you, you know what the trending dog is in the United States? Pitbull? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a dog that people are selling. They actually have to manufacture these dogs. They're artificially inseminating them. I'm sorry. They're uh, having artificially to do... Artificially manufacturing they're, no, they're, dogs? They're artificially inseminating the dogs, and they're doing C-section, and these are expensive dogs, anywhere from $2,000 to $20,000 for one of these pups without training. This is the dog that's trending in the U.S. French Bulldog. I know some Frenchy breeders. Frenchy. It's French a... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to understand what, what, what you're saying. Okay. Are they order, special ordering this dog? That yeah, people are... Can't, not, it's not a natural... Hey, hey, it's a dog that it's been made up. It's, it, it is a designer dog. That it, you know they they breeded this and breeded this and made it into this, but that's how all dogs came about. The thing about this dog is they don't match up real good because they're low to the ground and the male can't raise up and and hit the spot quite correctly. So they have to artificially inseminate the dogs if they want to have a litter. Are you now serious? because the females are small and everything, the litters don't really come through the birth canal smoothly, so they have to do C sections to deliver the pups. Oh, that's a bit much. But for twenty thousand dollars, I bet you would be doing a artificial insemination and C-section. Say you have a, a litter of puppies. Say you have five litters of puppies. You got about twenty, thirty dogs at two to twenty thousand dollars a pop. People are ordering these dogs like crazy. Like I said, this is the trending dog in the United States. And I know what again? French bulldog. French? It's called a Frenchie. I gotta see a picture. I, you gotta see a picture. I, pull it right on up, Bianca. French Bulldog. And I, like I said, I know people that are breeding French Bulldogs. So I, I see why it's the trending dog in the United States of America. Now, Canada, the trending dog is the Golden Retriever. In the UK, we got the Boxer. Sweden, we got the Schnauzer. Russia, we have the Yorkshire Terrier. Now, Russia, where they're all hard and strong and stiff, we got the little Yorkie being uh, the dog of Russia. What kind of dog you like, Elijah? A poodle. You like poodles? Let's see. Is poodle on the list? Let's see if we can find... Oh, guess whose poodle is trending for, Elijah? Who? France. You know about France? No. Well, that's where the rain in Spain is mainly on the plain. France is next door. Like, they live next door to each other? <laughs> yeah, France is uh, the poodle. Then we got India for the German Shepherd, China for the Chow, Japan for the Akita. Uh, the Philippines chose the Corgi to be their dog that they're trending on. Uh, let's see. My, my little map is so tiny. Yeah, French Bulldog. You see how low yeah, to the I'm ground that? that's, thing, that's That's a low rider, baby. Why low would you rider. Do that to the dog. They, they can't even make well, it. The thing about it is these dogs uh, these dogs are pretty enjoyable for the family. They don't chew on your stuff. They they don't cause a lot of trouble. You see, you got they got the posted up with the babies on your screen. These dogs are for everybody out there. The the French Bulldog is just a cool little designer dog to have. Uh, also, I was introduced to a Cavapoo lately. Uh, King Charles Cavalier and a Poodle. And her name is Lola, and she seems to be the coolest chick ever, let me tell you. She's um, doing everything she's supposed to, and she's only eight weeks old. So I, I got a picture of her on my Instagram. That's Master Christian 404 on Instagram. Uh, Lola, the Cavapoo. All these designer dogs are fun and good, but uh, I don't think they're going to protect you in a pinch, though. And that's what I want you to know. Even though... They're, they'll keep you happy and healthy and give you a friend to talk to. I still need some uh, more power behind it. I need a, need a little hard hitting for my dog. Because, I'm I, you know, to design, they've, they've already designed the dog that I need. It's called a Malinois. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Belgian Shepherd. I'm like, what? Malinois. All right. That's that's what I've told you about that the military uses. The police forces are switching over from German Shepherds. The Malinois is just an all-around great dog. Belgian Shepherd. Malinois. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and it's, it's it's trending on security forces all over the world. It's it's a trendy thing. You know about Malinois, don't you, Elijah? Yes, you have one. Dude, what's her name? Android. And is Android just the most awesome dog ever? Yes. And you must be the most awesome nephew ever. Yes. I figured as much. <laughs> Tell them we're about to leave. Say we're out with the Master Christian Dog Show. Dog show. See you next week. See you next week. See you next week, folks. This has been Master Christian.